Hey y'all, welcome back to Pilot Mountain Air Gunner. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, I've got a little um, a video for you here that's kind of special to me. Um, and, and I think a whole lot of people are going to appreciate the help that they can find here. Um, I'm bringing this to you not because I'm a, I'm a great shooter offhand or anything like that. Um, but these are tricks and tips that I've learned for from better shooters, people that are better, people that, that can shoot well. And um, by using these techniques, I am using them and I'm practicing them and, and they're working, they're working well for me. So what I wanna do is pass them off to you in case you know uh, you haven't um, taken the time to, to really practice shooting offhand. Um, this is a lot for hunters uh, that, that are out in the field. If you go and take a shot on something, you want to make sure you dispatch that animal cleanly. And um, you can't always do that. You don't always, don't always have something to lean on. Of course, you can take sticks and so forth. I just think this is a really good skill that, uh, uh, as air gunners, we should all learn because um, everything we do is about precision shooting, make, making sure that you hit your game right where you need to be. I'm one, I like headshots. And my phone always does this every time I start recording a video. Let's see what happens here. Um, but anyway, uh, learning the fundamentals, that, that's going to pay off in big dividends. It really truly is. Okay, another thing this is going to help you do is Everybody, you know, I, I see it everywhere. Everybody wants an FX impact. You know, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Everybody wants uh, top-notch thousand-dollar scopes and all that crazy stuff. And I get that if you can afford that. But most people can't afford that. And that's just the truth. By learning the fundamentals of uh, of shooting, shooting not just offhand. It's going to be off your bench. You know, everything. When you learn these, you're going to find out. You're going to become a whole lot more steady on the bench or sticks or anything when you can learn to immediately adjust your body, your breathing, uh, your, even your thoughts, everything, um, into um, shooting. So again, uh, you don't need the best gun on the market. By learning the fundamentals, you can take, I don't care what it is, um, the gun doesn't matter. Your trigger, you know, everybody's trying to find the best gun, the best trigger, and I understand the trigger very well especially for me personally because of the fact that um, with my hands it's, it, I, I can't I have a tendency to jerk and I always pull off to the right I, I, I've always pulled off to the right and down a little and I have used some of these tricks and I've found I'm no longer pulling down I'm pulling still a little off to the right and it's something I'm working on but you know I've went from you know, shooting um, 30 to 40 yards with groups you know as big as a softball to now groups as I don't know maybe a couple inches just by you just by simple little adjustments and I'm only getting better and that's what I want to do is teach you so you don't have to worry about oh it's all because of my gun it's because of my trigger it's because I don't have the right scope listen y'all I've got a budget gun <laughs> Um, oh, of course I'm going to get it. I've been out practicing. And I wanted to video it, but I'm not going to. It's simply because I don't want to hear a bunch of shit from people saying, oh, you're not knocking the, the uh, um, center of the target out every time or whatever. Or, you know, that's not all that great. Eventually I will. Um, it, it's different when you're hitting something that's, that's broader. So you put a, a can out or something like that at 50 yards and you're popping it and, and trying to hit it dead center and getting it really close. So that's different. Um, what I'm doing is setting the little dots um, from the shoot and see targets are, I don't know, half inch. I think they're half inch uh, all the way across. Um, and also, I, I drew circles of golf balls and I like to practice with those. But I've got a budget gun. Hudson Flash Pup. And I'm going to show you. I hurt my shoulder here. My scope. I know you can't see it. It's backwards. 
but it's a belize sheet 8 by 24 by 50. i do not have an expensive scope you can buy this scope on amazon right now yeah for like 40 dollars and i actually bought this scope because i had the 30 caliber hots and brake barrel and it fit me or it worked well with the scope that thing's got a hell of a kick on it and it's lasted uh, also it's lasted through this gun i've had this gun for uh, about a year and a half so uh, about two years two years this is a little cheap scope i, I don't dial it i do dial one when, of course when i uh, line it up you have to <laughs> but i use my reticle so either way let's get into this a little bit more okay first thing most important that you need to get this right here your biggest issue and this is everybody this is not just anybody is your thoughts what's between your ears right here your belief focus and belief number one thing once you focus on taking the time to learn to shoot better start putting energy into it and effort into it you're going to see results plain and simple that's just uh, as long as you are trying different techniques and keep trying until you know um, something's going to work for you belief you have to have the belief that when you pull that rifle up and you look at that target you have to have the belief that you're going to hit that target where you want to hit it. You have to kind of visualize it and see it, build a confidence. As you get better and better, uh, your confidence is definitely going to build. But focus and belief. That's your number one key. Number one to start with this, this uh, little um, tutorial here is focus and belief. You have to focus on it. Take the time. Put the effort into it go out and try it you know you're not going to get anywhere if you don't try yeah you're going to spend some money on wasting some lead that's just part of it that's the way it goes but belief you have to have that belief that i can do it if you're out constantly running around saying i can't i can't i can't you're right then you can't you can't do it you have to have it in your head i can i can do this come on you got to be a little engine that could i think i can i think i can't until you get it like I said, I've watched my groups shrink and shrink and shrink. I'm, I'm, I'm not shooting offhand right now, 50 yards, half inch groups, uh, offhand yet. But you know what? I want to reach that because I have it in my mind. I can see it happening and eventually I'll do it. So focus and bleed. That is your number one key, number one fundamental of offhand shooting to become better. Okay, number two. Look at my notes over here. Um, something I really wasn't going to go into is, uh, is collecting dope. Yes, D-O-P-E. Dope stands, um, it's your, your data of your previous engagements where you went out uh, on the range. Also, nowadays, there's apps. You can download an app, and uh, it'll tell you uh, what you're shooting or what you should be shooting at what range and, and the speed and so forth as long as you got a chronograph and you know what your gun's doing but if you don't have that you can use different techniques you can you can set up a paper up and put dots on them and move them out at different ranges and you can watch the drop of your pellets or slugs whatever you're using at that range and then i do click my dope and put it right there on my scope cap I just have it written out with a pen, got out a piece of paper, so I go to shoot, and I said, well, that's about 70 yards. I can look up here real quick, and I know I can't look up real quick because I can't see where the crap, but, you know, okay, well, about 5 MOA. four to five MOA on my uh, lines and I'm not going to get into this really deep because that would be a completely different other video there's other videos out um, 
on this. Mine, this video is basically about shooting and shooting offhand. Um, but first of all, you have to know where you're shooting. You know, I go out and I practice. I'll practice at 25 yards and 30 and 35 and 40 yards, uh, even out to 65, just depending on what I can get. But each move, you know, I know about where I'm showing. So collect your dope, uh, your data on your previous ex experiences from out shooting, and you're going to have to have that. Doesn't matter if it's off a bench, offhand, or whatever. Have that. Make sure, of course, your gun's lined up. If your gun's not lined up, and now this isn't necessarily true because there are some shooters, um, offhand shooters, that set their gun up intentionally, um, not zeroed in, because when they pull it up to themselves, the cant goes into the rock, the movement left to right, the tilt, it's, it's called the cant, will move. To the position to where they are. I'm big for that. Um, actually, I line my scope up with a plumb bob. I don't use uh, anything. I, d I hang a string with something. I know gravity. Gravity is going to make that straight line. There's no ifs, ands about it. And I can lay it right on there, and I know it's straight. But um, I noticed for a while, of people shooting, my it seemed to be canned a little bit where I've been shooting it, and line it up a little bit and I think it's lined up it's twisted a little bit to the right for me but when I pull it up to me because I have a tendency to shoot off hand if you watch my videos and I know I keep harping on this and I keep hate talking about it because it just puts more energy into it yes I have physical issues you know I, especially um, the nerve damage and, and, and uh, musculoskeletal disorder shit like that it causes me a problem so my body it, it leans different or whatever it's like anybody you have to learn to adjust your body and this is the reason I'm going through this I learned to shoot uh, and done pretty well when I was a kid now I wasn't a professional but I was pretty damn good offhand and I, I've gotten older I've got issues health issues my body structure uh, my actual structure of my bones and my body have completely changed so now I had to learn to reshoot learn how to center my body and that, that's your big thing so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and go right into this centering your body your stance your stance is I'm gonna say number two since we we went in the belief um, but but your stance stance is important you have to try to line up now I've, if you watch my last video I talk about getting that arm in close to you and laying out the, the arm on the hip bone and tilting your hips now actually um, professional shooters I if you had had uh, I tried to put notes in there professional and that's another reason I'm doing this video I had really no reason uh, um, or idea that I was going to go into that in my other video I was just talking and I got into it because it's an idea of mine that I've had that I want to put this video out and my that video was all about we're going to go out and we're going to shoot and get some awesome shooting footies and, and go from there and it didn't happen so if you watch the video you understand you know there's a little bit of shooting in it and there's me talking about what I'm talking about now um, among some other things so either way um, your stance make sure you're trying to get the lineup a central lineup I'm gonna stand up oh take me a second here let me get my body in yeah shit okay uh, uh, uh. Pull my pants up. Try to hide my gut. Oh, <laughs> uh, so anyway. I already spoke on this, but this video is about this. You'll see immediately I go straight into laying that arm, arm up against me. And that front. Let's see. Not right on top of my hip bone here, but actually that front top is where I lay my arm for getting steady. Now, if I'm shooting downhill, it seems to work very well. Cock and put all, I'm centered, but I'm thinking, put my weight on my back hip. Now, but if I'm straight, and this is actually how you're supposed to do it, boom, cock 
right hip up, hip up. Your center is here, but if your focus is on putting that weight on your back leg, it centralizes it and it'll stabilize you and steady you. And the same with your feet. Your feet need to be, your back foot is going to be your movement of your scope. The ball of your foot, the ball of both. When I stand up, I point one foot kind of towards the target. Now, professional shooters, once they get lined up, they'll, they, they will move. If, you, if the tilt of your foot, your front foot, once you are lined up, move it in, move it out, wherever that lines you up should not move that scope at all. The scope should stay in the same spot when you move that right foot because they'll hold that foot and then they'll twist it more forward and they shoot that way. The left foot, and this isn't always the case, this again depends on your body. Uh, if your right foot, what I find works for me, when you line up you should be standing 90 degrees from your target. Bend at the hips, you don't want any more than a 30 degree turn. At 30 degrees maximum, you, your gun is on target. Your eyes are going to be on target and put the gun on the target so you're shooting straight. If your stance isn't straight, your body is naturally going to try to pull itself into the most comfortable position. It's going to try to relax. And, and, and of course, it's going to throw you off. But your feet, your back leg, move that. Use the ball of your foot and, and move it left and right to line your scope up once you're in, space, in place. You'll see it once you're there when you start moving that foot. With me, if I move it to the right, a little bit try to move it out to the right and you actually physically move it until you're you're balanced first of all and, and if you're doing that you'll notice if you move it to the right you're off on the right so moving it to the right a little bit seems to pull me to the right moving it to the left a little bit pulls me to the left moving it forward a little bit kind of moves me up and to the right a little bit back I seem to pull a little more back and and go down. It all depends on 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 you. You have to figure this out uh, with your stance. Now, um, but but basically, your stance. You want everything to be straight. And I know from my experience, because I always would just like everybody else hold that gun out there and try to shoot. But immediately when I put that in there. Started shooting off my hip, the group started to come together on me. Um, I was starting to hit things, you know, 40, 50 yards. If you've seen it before, the Army Man, I, I was able to pop the Army Man at 50 yards offhand. Air Venturi, uh, Venturi uh, targets, 65 yards offhand. You know, I'm happy. I'm thrilled with that. No, that doesn't make me fantastic. That is a personal goal that I've set and it's working for me. So you understand. Gun. When you're holding your gun, now this arm here can be out a little. It's gone to, but once you, when when you hold that gun up there, you've got a pocket right here that that gun will lay right into to keep it steady. So make sure you get that gun into the pocket. Another thing is um, well, there, there's two more things I want to go over with with your stance. There, there is. Um, I, I went over this before, but you want to rest on bone, not muscle. I'll see a lot of people, they want to grip the gun real tight or, or lay it on softer tissue. Me, I lay mine right here. Just because I can't really, a lot of people will lay it to where it falls down there, or they'll turn their hand like this. And the reason they do that is because it's solid. Muscles are going to fatigue. They're going to get tired especially when you're holding holding a gun um, 
after about seven seconds it starts to fatigue the lactic acid kicks in and your your muscle will begin to quiver and shake and once you have a steady firm foundation and you're resting it just like a table or a rest once you're steady that bone is going to keep everything in order no matter how you're holding holding the gun whether you're holding it like this or whether you're holding it like this uh, I see people hold them like this um, I see people will lay them on their knuckles and shoot that's so it'll sit on bone so there's something steady so it doesn't move because your muscles get tired and if you get enough lactic acid if you're not getting enough oxygen into you they'll start to twitch and that's going to mess you up same thing without the oxygen your heart rate is also going to go up and that you've got even more moving and then if you're not paying attention to your breathing which is something we'll go over and the final tip from your stance is learning the kick of your gun you get that gun held I don't care if it's on a bench on a stick or whatever once you get steady once once you get that trigger squeezed that gun should go off and it doesn't matter if it's an air rifle it's still got a kick you want it one push straight back into you you don't want it kicking up down to the left or whatever if you're holding it properly it should kick straight back into you the kick is going to tell you once that gun once the gun kicks if you're hanging on to it and you're moving with it or you let it move you that's a mistake what you need to do is let the gun fire let it go there are professional shooters field target shooters actually have guns instead of the gun kicking this the entire piece is set up that when they fire all this moves inside the stock the stocks cut back cut back a little further uh, to where it slides back and forth into the stock and that's to keep that jerking out of the gun it's that the gun there's still going to be movement but it lightens the movement a whole lot so instead of when you shoot and the whole gun says <clears throat> when you do just they're shooting and this piece is moving the stock itself is not moving and the reason they do that is because of the fact that they're trying to keep that out of it um, so what you do is learn from the kick when you get done when you have fired and this will be the final and do your follow through in this series the, the, the follow through is going to be my final thing I'm going over that gun should fall right back into place on target or real damn close to target when you're doing that you're doing it right <laughs> okay <laughs> my son came in with some cookies we had to get that done and of course I had to, I had to test one to make sure you know they were safe <laughs> Learn how to hold yourself straight. Get your gun. And you can get an, uh, an axe. If you're close range and the knife is, you know, kind of thick enough. A knife, I like to do that at close range. But what you do is get in your stance. And get yourself an axe. Turn it up to where it's facing you. Or a knife. Set it up to where all you can see is that knife edge. Stand in your position the way you're going to shoot. And move your body back and forth find yourself to where you are the stables to where you can stay standing and you're not wobbling back and forth when you go back and forth one edge of that knife or axe is going to get thicker and thicker but when you're looking directly at the center of that edge you cannot see the edge it's going to be even you'll see both sides the one little movement and you're going to see uh, uh, the edge kind of disappear and you'll see the side of it take a look at that take your gun put your gun on that axe that knife put that crosshair dead center on it get your body stabilized the way we went through get your uh, take a breath in I didn't talk about that but again take a deep nice deep breath this will clear the lactic acid out of your system um, and keep your body from shaking Get yourself in there, get you a few deep breaths, 
close your eyes for five seconds. Count five seconds. Open your eyes again. If you're not looking at that edge or that crosshair, line is not directly on that edge, move. Adjust yourself. Move your right foot. Always your right foot a little bit. Adjust. Close your eyes again for five seconds. Keep doing this until, uh, again, even my stance. This helped me learn quickly. I keep saying, I'm pulling to the right, I'm pulling to the right. It's my stance. It has a whole lot to do with it, is my stance. Because every time when I close my eyes for five seconds and open up, I'm always off to the right a little bit. So I'll adjust and pull it back, adjust and pull it back. And after practice, I'm able, I will move a little bit, but instead of, uh, you know, being that far off in the scope, now, or, you know, I'll move, say, that far off. Now it's up real, a lot closer to that line. And that's simply from practice. Practice, practice, practice. Um, but that right there, uh, uh, some excellent aiming tips that'll, that'll help you work on your actual aiming. Or front sights you have the same exact thing with your reticle. When you are looking through your reticle, wherever now me using hold over I have to find the spot on the reticle but just dead in the crosshairs like I went over before in the last video you want to be looking at the crosshair not the target when you get in your stance you turn your body you look at what it is you're shooting at you pull that rifle up to what you're looking at fit the rifle to you to what you're looking at. You're going to tilt your head just a little bit. Of course, lay it on, that, on, on, on uh, the comb of your uh, gun. You should be looking right through that sight, but you're not looking at the target. You're looking at the crosshair itself or that bead on the end. When you focus on that, everything will seem, they'll start to slow down. You'll see yourself wobbling try it try it look at the target go take your gun out and go and point and aim and look at the target and think about I want to hit the target right there I want to hit it there where you're trying to hit it and while you're doing that stop doing that look at that bead or dead center in your crosshairs or wherever you're aiming it should be dead center if you're practicing make sure you set it up like that because you're going to throw yourself off. Learn learn the basics and then expand. Um, but focus on where you want it to hit on the crosshair, not where you want to hit it on the target. And when you do that, you're going to watch your slow, your movements, your wobble is going to slow down because you're mentally focusing. And when you, you're narrowing it down instead of something a little bigger in your scope, automatically your body will start to adjust and not move as much because you're looking at that crosshair and when that target crosses like I talked before you're shaking you're shaking but get used to that when you get it on a lot of times I can I, I can get it on and hold it and just hold it steady where it's just got a little bit of a move or a little bit uh, that, that that's good but that doesn't always happen if you keep your eye on that crosshair itself or that front sight you let the target you and where you're trying to hit come in to focus on right behind where you are looking right behind the crosshairs the crosshairs on the target not the target on the crosshair this will you'll watch it immediately if you're looking say the red dots on the targets you uh, if you're constantly looking at that and trying to put that crosshair in the target it's gonna move but when you start focusing on the crosshair your movements gonna slow it's a mental thing uh, it tells your body you know focus get finer get finer so there you go when you do that you'll watch and see the area that you're wanting to hit the red dot on the target pass over those crosshairs that's what you're looking for if you're unable to hold it steady okay another thing with aiming 
there, there, there's, I'm going to say approach shooting. Uh, what they call approach shooting is where you're taking your gun, and there's a couple little tricks that trick shooters use, and I'm going to tell you right here. But it's where you take your gun, and instead of, Pulling that gun, looking at that crosshair, but instead of letting it wobble and trying to shoot where it's at, what you're going to do is find that target and you're going to move the barrel. Start controlling your muscles. Use your muscles. A figure eight. Start drawing out. A little figure eight sideways figure eight and depending on which way you're going it should be to where when you come through if there were two targets side by side you're actually going to have it across one target um, but if there are two targets you know you would make an eight like a sideways eight when you get to the six o'clock position or headed for the six o'clock position between four and five o'clock on an analog clock you're making a figure eight and you're coming around four five six you're gonna go over six o'clock twice but you only one target but when four or five that's when you start squeezing your trigger because you're controlling it you're making it move when you're doing that when you pull your trigger around beginning four or five your chances of hitting where the six at are really good. It's kind of like moving uh, another target. Another trick with that, seven o'clock. Use an analog log clock, six o'clock, a little bit at seven o'clock for a right-handed shooter. Now, left-handed shooter, it's gonna be, of course, just the opposite. It's gonna be uh, the five o'clock instead of uh, the seven o'clock. Take your gun, it's called drawing a line. You take control of that barrel. And it's wobbling too much, you can't start to move it move that barrel find your target and start a little bit lower quite a bit at seven o'clock and draw a line up to the target and you hit that edge of like the the little half inch red circles that you're shooting at if you're shooting a shoot and see target or something like that when you hit there that's when you pull your trigger because you're moving and bam Bam, bam, you're taking control. It is controlled shooting, and a lot of professionals sh uh, use it, the, the, these, that exact key, the figure eight. You begin to control what the barrel is doing instead of allowing the barrel to wobble on its own. You control the wobble. You can also use uh, what they call the pendulum. You take that barrel and get lined up and just start swinging it and a pendulum back and forth so your targets there and you're going back and forth and you hit about that four or five o'clock you start squeezing that trigger if you're wanting to hit six o'clock boom that's when you pull your trigger so that, that's a little tricks um, I've tried it the seven o'clock seems to work really well for me especially if I start down uh, because of the fact that I have a, a tendency to pull off and to the right, if I start and I pull it up, once I start pulling that uh, um, gun up and then I squeeze the trigger when I'm supposed to squeeze the trigger, I'll fire and I'll pull off to the right a little bit a lot of times, but that drop that I constantly get from trying to hold it is now gone. It, it stays more centered because I've taken control of the barrel. And that's something that's a technique that's working really well for me. So give that a shot as well. Okay, next tip. Breathing, breathing, breathing. Extremely important, extremely important. You will find out doing it. Um, first and foremost, your upper area of your body. Do not, most people don't do deep breathing. They get in the habit when you breathe your chest rises and lowers it rises and lowers because they're taking shallow breaths not deep into the lungs shallow breaths and most people do it uh, every day 
the majority do it but focus on pushing down in your to your stomach area keep this area up here once you've got a nice breath in keep it expanded breathe I'm breathing right now you don't see my body moving much I'm gonna shoot back a little bit because I'm breathing down into here your lungs down in here but breathe down in towards your stomach area not through not into your chest because when you get in your chest and you're breathing that's gonna move it get your body your frame straight get your aim get your focus your belief everything everything in, in order there you can see I can sit right here and I can breathe right now nice deep breaths and I'm not moving a whole lot but upper chest you see it moving get your breathing to where you're breathing deep in your lungs and it's not affecting your movement of your body uh, on your breathing now breathing the breathing is extremely important when you're getting ready to shoot and pull the trigger um, I, I know in my last video I talked about um, well I like to breathe and let it out about halfway now that's an old hunting uh, breath that I was taught um, you know somewhere along the line years ago and it's something I've always used I'll take a breath in I'll let it about half out and it works but I've been trying something new using what snipers like to use they'll use the top of the breath or the bottom of the breath a lot of them like to use the bottom of the breath you take in nice always three deep breaths before you shoot before you get on target before you shoot that'll relax your heart rate that'll remove lactic acid out of your system so your muscles aren't twitching too much help you get your body stabilized three deep breaths and after those three deep breaths when you go to aim and when you go to pull your trigger there is a three second window between four seconds and seven seconds that your body becomes the most relaxed when it becomes the most relaxed between you start counting to ten one two three four five six seven if you'll notice between five six seven four once you hit four five six seven those few seconds right there your body has a tendency to be the most calm and the most stable so use that use that to your advantage try to get your shots in within that four your trigger pull within that four to seven seconds it's gonna make a huge difference you'll watch yourself if you'll practice it get set up take get them breaths in clear that lactic acid before you shoot get set up count to ten thousand one thousand two when you hit that bad boy if you'll watch it between four and seven seconds that three second window is what you want to pull your trigger it's not always going to happen but if you're in a position where you're able to hold it and and take a uh, your shot after that fourth second between the fourth and second your chances of your body your muscles not quivering not jumping because all the lactic acid is out and and time frame wise that's what it seems to calm back down and it does it just for a few seconds you're going to notice the difference it's a huge huge uh, breathing technique there that would definitely is going to help you um, but yeah the breathing the breathing your circ your circulatory system uh, uh, it, it helps circulate blood through you it helps slow down your um, your heart rate but a lot of shooters like I said I, I was telling you take a breath in about halfway out it's what's comfortable for you but what I find a lot of professionals take that breath in on that bottom before you start to breathe in that few seconds if you can time it to get the 1001 
six, seven. In those three seconds at the bottom of the breath before you come back up, once you let the air out, pull the trigger. That, that's a, that's I've noticed, but instead of stopping in between breaths to try to keep some lactic acid or the air in there, it's the breathing before that will get rid of the lactic acid. On that bottom breath, your body is going to move the least. I've noticed on my top breath, I have a little more waddle, wobble than I do when I have everything released and let out and on that bottom breath and those last and those few second window. So there, there's an excellent tip on your breathing. I'm going to go ahead and trigger squeeze. No ammo, y'all. No ammo. I want you to put that gun on target. Nothing in there. And practice. Squeeze that trigger. Squeeze it. Don't pull it. We have a tendency, you're using only your finger. We have a tendency to use our whole hand. Don't do that. Your finger. That's what does it. Your finger. When you go and jerk, boom, you're going to pull your gun. You're going to pull your gun almost every single time. Squeeze that trigger. Practice. Practice. No ammo. Over and over. Squeezing. Squeezing. Now, there's different ways you can have your trigger as well. Me, I just do the squeeze. Um, your first pad here, or your 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 uh, between your knuckle right there, seems to be where most uh, shooters like like to lay the the uh, trigger. There's a technique. One, you get it in there, you pull that trigger, pull it straight back with that pad or right there. Some people like to roll the finger. A different technique. When they put it in, they roll they. My finger don't work that way, but it kind of rolls back. They kind of roll it. They put it on down there on the bottom and roll it, or they'll roll it down. But most roll backwards a little bit, put it in the trigger, and when they roll it up and it goes towards the, by the, the curve of your trigger or whatever your trigger is, the roll on your finger can set it off. There's also another technique of the two finger technique. It might be a little weird, but you can take two fingers or some shooters, instead of worrying about messing that up all the time, you put two fingers in there. You know, when they're holding their gun, and they're squeezing them down, pushing them just straight down. And when they push them straight down, it hits the bottom of that trigger if you've got a, a curved trigger, and it pushes it back. And that's how it will fire. Instead of squeezing it like everybody else, I'm not real good at it. But, but they'll put their fingers in there and just push them straight down. And when they do, it causes hits the trigger and causes it to go back. So uh, work on your squigger, squigger <laughs> on your trigger squeeze. Um, and, and these are things you can do on a rainy day. A lot of these practicing your stance practicing your, your trigger. I would have had this video out earlier, but I've had to wait for some rainy days, and that's what I've done, and then I went out and done some practice. Um, so um, that's something that works really, really well. I'm going to go ahead and try to follow through. Final thing is follow through. You have to pay attention to where you have shot. When you follow through is one of the biggest things that causes shooters to screw up and people doesn't don't realize it when you're done when you take that shot you're not done when you pull that trigger it's not over uh, pop your head up you move around it's not over it's not over until you have seen it on target and seen where it's going and what it's doing remember you're focused on what's going on the very first step make sure you're completely focused when you pull that trigger See where it hit. But also, most importantly, when I was talking about your gun, should always kick back into you and fall right back into place. It shouldn't go up, but even if it does, if you're its firearm or whatever, it should fall right back into place. 
if your body is lined up right, real close to being on target. Um, your follow through, see, that's what gets shooters in a slump constantly because they can't get it, and it's because they're in the habit of pulling their head up. Keep the rifle there, watch it go and hit your target. Don't pull the trigger and then jump up real quick. That follow through is extremely important in your focus and keeping your mind in what you're doing past the point that you've already done it. You know, you've already went in, you made your shot or whatever, but you're expecting, remember, you're expecting it to hit that target. You're focused and you're watching your gun. Is your gun making a movement and coming back into the place that it's supposed to be? Is it still on target? Are you pulling it or whatever? Um, your follow through can make you and break you. <laughs> people don't believe this start using follow through watch it hit that target keep your eye on it yeah. same thing if you're focused on follow through you're paying more attention to your trigger pull your trigger squeeze not pull squeeze your uh, you know they call it trigger pull they should call it trigger squeeze and it would make more sense and help people out a lot but but when you're not following through and paying attention to what's going on and, and see the movement of the gun. What, what happened? You don't know how to adjust for that. You don't know how to bring it back. You don't know what the problem is, why you keep uh, messing up over and over. If you see what you're doing, you can adjust for that. Maybe your body is not steady enough. You know, uh, your trigger pull is too hard. You know, a lot of things. But your follow through is always, always extremely important. Start practicing follow through and stop the ones, uh, people who want to shoot and pull it down real quick. Don't do that. Look at your target. Focus on that crosshair. Focus on that bead. Your follow through has to be when you finish pulling that trigger, it should still be on target. But more than anything, the target should be on your bead or on your crosshair where you pointed it. Focus on follow through it's extremely important extremely important and it'll, it'll make a lot of changes for you it'll let you see what you're doing and what you're messing up all right y'all i'm out of battery this is pilot mountain air gunner thank you so much for watching i hope you got something out of it go out and practice these tips guys i'm telling you i do it and every day when i add new techniques or whatever they work they work they work these are tips from professional shooters you know i'm learning and it's help, gonna help you learn. So thank you, I'm out of here. Appreciate you guys, I'll be back.